Video games are more often than not about death, but us players don't expect ourselves to be treated like the countless NPCs that we happily blow away. No, through a good old dose of plot armor, we expect the people we're playing as to make it through at least the first level in one piece. An expectation those tricky developers love to happily twist now and again to give us a rude awakening. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are nine video games that kill you in the first level. Number nine, Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 2 is one of the finest sequels ever made, upping the ante in every single department. The developers wanted to make this fact clear right away as well, and as a result delivered an opening level that still leaves players' jaws on the floor all these years later. In the opening, you catch up with the crew of the Normandy after the events of the first game, now on a mission in deep space. After a quick reintroduction though, the team is attacked by an immensely powerful force they'd later know as the Collectors. In a very brief mission, you assume direct control of Commander Shepard as they attempt to get the rest of the crew evacuated in the chaos. You're not able to do much, admittedly, you just get a few dialogue choices here, a fully controlled walk across the destroyed bridge of the ship there, but it still counts as a mission. And finally, evacuating the last remaining crew member Joker just in time, Shepard themselves aren't quite so lucky to survive the ordeal. Following one final blast from the collector ship, Shepard is thrown into space and with a ruptured suit, suffocates to death before burning up in the atmosphere of a nearby planet. Number 8, The Godfather. As you'd expect from a gangster game based on The Godfather, this adaptation starts with the kind of city-based carnage that made the movie so popular. The first level is actually a prologue to the rest of the game, and set nearly a decade before the main events, putting you in the shoes of a man named Johnny, the dad of the main playable character Aldo. The intro sees Johnny accosted by gang members and threatened in Little Italy. You're then given the chance to fight the men off, which you can absolutely do, swinging a few hooks here and there while trying to escape a burning building. Sadly, that fight turns out to be for naught, as when Johnny escapes, he's then ambushed in an alleyway and brutally riddled with bullets thanks to a couple of Tommy gun wielding bad lads. He dies just in time for his son to find his dead body, and then the prologue is over. Number 7, Silent Hill. A classic of the genre, one of the first things you do in Silent Hill is die. This survival horror game, strangely enough, makes it its mission to point out how you will not survive in spite of your best efforts. How, I hear you ask? Well, it sees you picking up as lead character Henry Mason as you wander around the eerie town of Silent Hill. The game then, just like The Godfather, lures you into a back alley, a place where nothing good ever happens. I mean, I seriously don't know why the human race keeps producing them before things get a little bit weird. Suddenly, you find yourself surrounded by a bunch of freaks who start taking swipes at you, leaving you completely helpless to get shanked in that alleyway. Fortunately for you, this all turns out to be a pretty bad dream, hence it appearing so far down the list, but you do technically still get killed as the player, so it absolutely counts. Number 6, Cuphead. Upon its release, Cuphead stood out not just due to its throwback animation style, but for being a throwback to tough as nails games of yore. However, Cuphead puts its inspirations to shame when it comes to the difficulty. Although the first 30 seconds is pretty straightforward, it's not long before the screen is filled with pits, spikes, enemies, and projectiles coming at you from every angle. Now, when a game proves too tough, players usually take their time to memorize enemy patterns, for instance. But because Cuphead has evil flowers and wicked mushrooms spawning into every screen every second, you need to plow through as quickly as possible while simultaneously dodging, well, everything. Even though first levels are meant to gradually break the player into the game, that's absolutely not the case here. The opening of this 2D side-scroller needs to be hard to let the player know the brutal onslaught of rock-hard levels that lie in store for them later on. You can technically survive, but if you haven't seen this level before, you've got no chance. Number 5, Bloodborne. Most From Software games expect you to die horribly in the first level. In a game like Dark Souls, the developers expected you to bite the dust, but you can technically get through the enemies and finish the boss off without messing up. Demon Souls, on the other hand, hits you with a tough as nails boss that you're unlikely to beat, and if you do, you're only rewarded by running into another super endgame boss that absolutely has your lunch and just kills you anyway. 
So yeah, consider that the secret 10th entry on this list. Bloodborne, though, is what we're talking about today. As yes, while again it is technically possible to avoid death in the opening level, the devs absolutely expected you to die. Why? Well, they don't even give you a fighting chance, really. Unlike the other games, all you start off with here is your fists, and one of the first actions you perform is walking into a room with a werewolf who promptly ruins your day. Experienced players might have the stamina to slowly chip away at the beast's health, sure, but first time players don't stand a chance and will enter the hunter's dream after a couple of hits to be able to grab some proper gear and then return for a much fairer fight. Because the afterlife hub of Bloodborne is so, so important to the rest of the game, this is where it expects to introduce players to it. Number 4, Shadow Dancer The Secret of Shinobi Shinobi was a hack and slash video game series that debuted back in 1987. Even though there were many great entries in the franchise, Revenge of Shinobi was the top dog, an absolute must play for Genesis owners. So when it was announced that Sega was making a sequel, Shadow Dancer The Secret of Shinobi, great title by the way, fans were over the moon. Although the structure of the sequel is the same as the other entries, there was one huge difference though. One hit here equaled instant death. Now, Shinobi is renowned for being toilsome anyway, but gamers this time around felt like Shadow Dancer was just taking the piss, the bisque, the biscuit, taking the biscuit. If you had a standard energy bar, the game would still be a formidable challenge, but now that our hero drops dead the moment he's hit with any sword, dagger, or shuriken, most players couldn't get very far. If you feel like you can progress through the game by simply memorizing the patterns of the baddies, it's not that simple either. The enemies have varied attacks and never telegraph what they're going to do, making even the simplest of encounters agonizingly arduous. Number 3. Driver for those of you who don't know, Driver is a PS1 game where you play as a police detective called Tanner who uses his skills behind the wheel to infiltrate a crime syndicate. To start the main campaign, you need to execute all the basic driving techniques in the tutorial, which seems pretty simple, at least on paper. For instance, after you achieve stuff like a 360 degree turn, a burnout, etc, you can move on, which sounds easy, right? So what's the problem? Well, the issue is you're not actually told how to perform any of these techniques, meaning you have have to figure out everything by yourself. And yeah, I know some of you are probably thinking, that's not too bad, even if some of the moves are a bit tricky to pull off, at least you have all the time in the world to get the hang of them. Well, it turns out that you don't have all the time in the world, actually, as you have to perform every technique in 60 seconds. Many, many owners of Driver remember the frustration of pulling off every move, but one as the clock hit zero, causing the tutorial to just reset and you have to try all over again. Although we've all played games with unfairly difficult opening levels, Driver might be the only game that players just give up on before starting the main campaign proper. Number 2, Call of Duty Vanguard. Call of Duty's campaigns love to make an explosive first impression. The latest in the long-running series, COD Vanguard, is no different, as you jump into the shoes of a character hijacking a train before infiltrating a Nazi compound in order to nab some super secret intel. It's the kind of blockbuster opening you'd expect from this franchise, that is, until things take a super dark turn towards the end of the mission. With you and your team ambushed and then captured, you're introduced to the game's big bat, who gives these standard monologuing threats on top of dipping into a spot of racism for good measure. In a scene that weirdly evokes the Negan eeny meeny miny mo scene from The Walking Dead, the Nazi decides to show the team who's in charge by beating your character to death with a chair. As the story is told non-linearly, this isn't the end we see of the character, but still, that doesn't stop him from being definitively killed in this opening mission, and what a way to go it is. Number 1. Ghosts and Goblins before Dark Souls, before Ninja Gaiden, before Takeshi's Challenge, before Contra, before anything, Ghosts and Goblins was hailed as the hardest video game ever. And in the eyes of many, this Capcom title still deserves that mantle. Ghosts and Goblins is of course your classic save the princess, kill the demon affair, only this time you can only get hit twice before you lose one of your three lives, and all it takes then is six hits to receive a game over. Even though Ghosts and Goblins later levels are brain destroyingly difficult, most people only know this from word of mouth since most avid gamers couldn't even get past the opening level. Not only do zombies, werewolves and flaming skulls come at you from every angle, but your limited attacks and rigid controls make it a challenge to vanquish even the most rudimentary enemy. Hell, the ground shifts up and down so often it's even tricky to aim at the enemies with precision, never mind pull off any moves. And because there is no save option and checkpoints are almost non-existent, many players who've played Ghosts and Goblins only saw level 2 and beyond by viewing it online. 
So that's our list. Once what you guys think down in the comments below. Are there any other games that kill you in the first level I missed off here? And what do you think about these? While you're down there as well, can you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't know, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.